Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Disruptors at the Door. Afternoon, you've made the right decision. 90 minutes, you could have had slightly cold, hazy sunshine, but instead you've come to find out about the future, because over the next 90 minutes, we are going to find out this digital revolution, is it really going to transform the way we think about the real estate uh, industry? We've got eight contestants who are going to try and convince you that way. Talk a little bit more about how shortly we're going to make this work and how you're involved in making the decision this afternoon. But right at the outset, I would like you to put your hands together and give an enormous welcome Sponsors this afternoon from Lenar International, please welcome their president, Chris Marlin. Welcome. Today, uh, thank you very much, uh, and I want to thank uh, Mipum for giving Lenar the opportunity to sponsor this extremely innovative session. We've been spending some time with the presenters uh, backstage and it's going to be a great show. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Lennar. I won't, I won't do a long commercial. Uh, founded in 1954, taken public on the New York Stock Exchange about 42 years ago. Uh, Lennar is the second largest home builder in America. Uh, but it's more than a home builder. It's an innovator in the real estate space in the United States. Lennar has a mortgage company, a title company, a commercial development platform, a multifamily platform. It is a diversified real estate concern for the global investor. We have a solar company. We have an innovation center at Lennar that's gonna be very focused on a lot of the business plans that will be presented today. Lennar International is the international engagement arm for Lennar. And one of our jobs is to travel the world and find out who's innovating what, and bring them back to the Lennar ecosystem in the United States. We also offer a global home sales platform, EB-5 immigrant investor programs, and we source foreign capital for the entirety of the Lennar platform, whether that's our home building business, urban planning, master plan communities, multifamily or commercial, anything in the Lennar ecosystem. So why is a, an American home builder uh, sponsoring an innovation session a, a business plan contest for the future uh, in the name of the Dragon's Den. Uh, there's a simple reason. Uh, we are not going to be a horse and buggy company. Uh, Lennar is committed, just as is MIPM this year, to exploring disruption and innovation in the real estate industry writ large, however that manifests itself. By 2020, just five years from now, 80% of all adults on the planet Earth will carry a supercomputer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. That's two billion people today, doubling to four billion people in literally the next five years. And these are not expensive supercomputers. Micromax, the most popular brand in India, sells basics for under $40. From 2009 to 2013, Boston Consulting estimates the mobile industry invested $1.8 trillion, $1.8 trillion in mobile infrastructure improvements globally, increasing download speeds by a factor of 12,000 and dropping data rate costs to a few cents per megabyte. And what does all this get us? When's the next bus? What's that tune playing I don't recognize? What would that barcoded product, conveniently barcoded, cost somewhere else? Did a company turning my phone into a remote control for taxis really just get valued at $41 billion, Uber? The mobile revolution and the Internet of Things are innovating real estate in too many ways to quantify. Today, let's get energized by our presenters. Hold on to your seats. It's going to be a wild ride today. Thank you for your time. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Chris, you are our first judge, but we've got three judges this afternoon, so please, uh, I'd like you to give an enormous welcome to our two additional judges. First of all, please welcome Juliet Morgan from Cushman and Wakefield, Global Technology Group, uh, Global Technology Group leader, 
And also Samuli Siren from Redstone Digital, a venture capitalist based from Berlin. I hope you've brought your wad of notes to, to invest this afternoon. So, hey, we're getting on well. We've got some judges. We need some contestants. So, again, I'd like you to put your hands together as we hear and welcome onto the longest couch in MIPIM our eight contestants this afternoon. First of all, Romain Amato from UI.com in China. Secondly, Ross Bailey from Appear Here in the UK. Third, Jean-Marie Sillier from Tandoori by Spice, the Spice Soft. Okay, and Michael Mandel from Comstack in the USA. Our fifth from South Africa is Scott Picken from Wealth Migrate. Welcome. Sixth is Renaud Cover from Spaniel in France. Our seventh, Henry Stewart from Visualize UK. And finally, last, but certainly not, loose, uh, no, not, not least, Brandon Weber from Hightower US in USA. You are all most welcome. Okay, so, what's the deal? How is this going to work this afternoon? Well, the first thing to say is the judges are here to make some observations and comments, but you are on top. You are making the decision, okay? And I need to know, I need to let you know how you're going to do it. You should have been given one of these, okay? Now is your moment to rip the top of it off and see what's inside, okay? Woo. Okay. Very good. So there we are. That goes like that. Okay. Now. You can shake it a little bit, you can... I wouldn't lick it, but this is, an, this is an LED magic stick, I am given to believe. And at some point, it will ignite, okay? So that's the plan. We'll give it a couple of minutes to shake around and just get a feel of it. But, the way we're going to organise this is as follows. We are going to hear from each of these eight contestants. They have got four minutes to convince you that their idea, their activity, their innovation is the disruptor that is going to make the difference um, to our lives in the real estate industry. We're then going to invite our judges to offer some questions, to test them, to ask them how does this work, all the rest of it. I'm trying to work out how this works. Did you pull? You have to break it. But what do I break? I just hate breaking things. What do you break? What do you do? Right, so... Oh, God! If you haven't done that, if you are, like me, of a nervous disposition, it's got, to, it's got to feel as though your knuckles have disappeared. Okay, so that's fantastic. So everyone needs to a serious break, like, like there's no tomorrow, okay? So that's perfect. So, we have got our eight contestants, four minutes each, six minutes of questions. Uh, we also have the opportunity of you asking questions as well via Twitter. More about that in just a moment. But I just want to see whether this is going to work, because after each of them, you're going to use these sticks to give an indication of whether you think, that's fantastic, hmm, that's all right, or that's rubbish. Okay, you're going to get two chances. After each one, we'll get the mood in the room from yourselves, and then at the end, we're going to go through all eight, and you have one chance to stick your stick in the air at the appropriate moment. We're going to count, we have digitally, we're going to count up all the ones in the air, and that uh, innovation is going to be the winner. Can I just check all the sticks are working? Can you just put your stick in the air? Okay, thank you. That's, that's just wonderful. Okay, I just want to try one thing. I, I've always wanted to do this. Can I just see whether I can do the first LED stick Mexican wave, starting this end, so it goes up and down again, so up, down, okay. Okay, all right, brilliant, I'm just gonna do one more from the back to the front, for, for our benefit, okay? So starting from the back, up, rolling forward. Okay, and then from the front going back again. I tell you, oh, hey, pretty cool, we enjoyed that, okay. 
So, that's great. The other thing is, um, can I just have the lights on for a moment? Just, just house lights for, for the little bit. Oh. You are centre stage, and I just want to offer one moment of digital or non-digital disruption. Because digital means we never talk to anyone, we just kind of do it via there. I'd like you to take two minutes now, and I'd like you to dare to look either in front of you or behind, and see whether you can greet someone you have never met before in your life. This could be a disrupting, life-changing moment. So I want to fill that room with happiness and buzz as you greet someone you've never met in your life. Two minutes to do that. Anyone met anyone they've never met before in their life? Hands up, just hands up, okay. Has anyone connected with anyone they think that might be an interesting contact? <laughs> Lady down there, okay, fantastic. Um, madam, I've got a hostess here. There's some chocolates for you for nur to nurture that relationship. There are some chocolates for you, very good. Okay, can I just check, has anyone got a birthday today? Anyone got a birthday today? Anyone got a birthday this week? Sir, over there. Fantastic. We love people with birthdays. Keep, we were going to sing happy birthday to you, but time does not permit. But you are most welcome to nip in with our love. Okay. So quite enough of being friendly. We are now in the bear pit. The bear pit of the dragon's den. Okay. And what I'd also like to do is to introduce to you just... Um, she'll come on stage now, is Joanna Campbell. Where's Joanna? Come, come along. Um, you're the hashtag queen from Mippin. There you go. With quite a large fan club. But, judge is going to be asking questions. They're going to be making presentations. You can also tweet in. Ask your question. Hashtag digital Q&A. They will all be going through Joanna. She will be synthesising hundreds of questions and we'll give space for her to ask some questions to our people as well. So, she is the lady with the di digital fingers. So there we are, the stage is set. Now, what we need to do is to hear from some of our contestants. And we're gonna go in alphabetical order. So, uh, Romain Amato from UI.com China. Come to the, uh, where, are you gonna, where are you gonna start? You can start there, that's great. Good to meet you. Hi. Good to meet you. So Thank basically you. you've got four minutes to convince us of your idea starting from now. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for participating. My name is Roman. I lead business development for GUI in Europe. GUI.com is the world's most trusted brand uh, for Chinese to find international property. Uh, first and foremost, we're a publishing platform and um, we help Chinese consumers uh, being educated and informed about global property markets. Uh, we work with 15 journalists uh, that create news and articles um, on reaching the Chinese buyers in this global phenomenon. Um, we work with agents, brokers, and developers around the world to help them reach and engage with the Chinese buyers. So GUI is a very, very disruptive company. Uh, disruption is not necessarily about breaking things. I think it's about creating brand new things. And uh, we've identified early a market uh, that had the exponential potential to grow. Uh, we therefore created uh, products and services um, that gave first access to the Chinese buyers with integrity and transparency. Um, we reach over 2.5 million people every month, um, list 4.8 million properties from 58 countries in the world. Um, we send leads to our international brokers 
and developers worth 150 billion US dollars in 2014. We also have a 4.5 billion US dollars uh, impact on international property markets. Um, the average budget of a GUI consumer is 2.5 million US dollars. And we reach uh, the Chinese audience uh, to four major areas. First is online, second would be to events, um, also mobile application, and data and research. With that being said, we have access to the biggest source of information out of any other companies in the world about Chinese property buyers, behaviors, and market trends. Which means that um, on this slide it shows um, the typical profile of a Chinese buyer. And um, we can see that their purchase reasons varies one out of four motivations. Uh, first reason for a Chinese buyer to invest in global markets would be investments. A second reason, it would be for immigration reasons. And third, it would be for education of their children. And lastly, for lifestyle properties. Um, the average budget of a GUI consumer is 933,000 US dollars. And um, they're ready to invest somewhere between six to 12 months. So this market is big, it's growing fast, and we help this market um, raise from five billion US dollars in 2010 to 52 billion US dollars in 2014. It's also expected to be 220 billion US dollars by the year 2020. So not only were the thought leader in China, um, but also around the world, we were featured in every global major publications, such as the Forbes, the New York Times, Bloomberg, Financial Review, just to name a few. And uh, we were the first property portal ever to have been invited to talk at the G20 conference. The Chinese today are the biggest international property buying group and they will continue to be for a very long time. Thank you for your attention. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. So, if you stand there, over to our judges. <laughs> Who would like to start with a question? Similarly. Believe Hello. and it will be. When will it be? Now. now. There it is, Helen. Um, could you explain a little bit your business model, um, especially when and in which stage of the whole thing you earn money, since I see you open the international markets for the Chinese buyer, but where is your take? Um, we're all about uh, empowering agents and developers uh, with the tools needed to reach and engage with the Chinese buyers. So who is paying you and what? Who pays you? Where are they Agents online? and developers that are looking to reach and have access to the So platforms. they get an access to your software, to your platform, to what? Absolutely. Um, so they monthly have, fee, give me more about your business model. Mo monthly fee, um, that gives access to translation services, uh, location-based services, and um, media content. And how much is that price in a month per customer? It can range. Uh, it can range from 1,000 uh, euros, depending on the visibility you want to have on our website, uh, to 20,000, depending on how many information you want to uh, adapt in Chinese language. Okay, Chris. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to recuse myself from this particular part of the session because we're a customer of GUI. Uh, How much do you pay a month? Um, I want the 1,000 euro deal because I want that <laughs> deal. I'm interested to hear what he's referring to in that regard. No, look, uh, the, the Juai has, has done a great job, uh, certainly with us. Uh, there is no question that the Chinese real estate buyer is going to be a massively disruptive part of the U.S. real estate market. Um, little known fact today, about 2% of all Chinese who leave the Chinese mainland for international travel come to the US, that's it, 2%. And that's a figure that existed before the US and China normalized relations in this last round with respect to a 10 year visa program. So I expect that number to skyrocket. And Juai has been working with us in that regard. 
But I do want the 1,000 euro deal, Roman. I think I'm getting a uh, okay, right negotiation deal. Julie, just step your game up. <laughs> Juliet, I'm hoping you're impartial in this. Have you got a question, I, thought? I feel I should adjudicate that conversation. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, how's the change in the Chinese economy going to impact your business? Actually, uh, the main challenge would be a global property market to adapt to its new uh, and biggest international source of international buyers. I think that uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and GUI is all about informa information and education. Okay, I just remind you, hashtag digital Q&A, and then you can ask those awkward questions that are... Panelists have forgotten about. Joanna, how's it going? Is there anything coming so far? Oh, come along, come along. And, uh... Okay, we have a user out there that would like to know. It's very fitting as we're at an event today. How do you apply your business to the event industry? We're, we're a very disruptive business. Um, we have an impact of 4.5 billion US dollars in global property markets. And that would be the total value of transactions that can, attribute it, uh, that can be attributed to GUI.com. Um, we're also uh, one of the three companies from uh, Western firms that has managed to establish a trusted Chinese brand. And um, we're um, most search terms on Baidu, which is the Google equivalent of, of uh, uh, in China. Uh, GUI is more researched than um, international properties. All right. So, okay. did you have one more to ask? Um, are there any kind of regulatory issues? Because we all know the political uh, thing in China. Is there something which makes your business more complicated or which is limiting your scalability no. now or long term? Not at all. Um, Not for the buyer also? Most, most uh, Chinese uh, banks have special entities to transfer money overseas for um, investment purchases or international properties. They all have that. So this is not a problem. And um, also, it's great to know that we have 30% of our audience that's based out of mainland. So such regulations don't apply. Juliet. Why are you different to your competitors? Um, we're in a unique position. I mean, we created something brand new uh, that didn't exist before. Um, I mean, there is no like, competition. Um, companies worth 16 billion are trying to copy us. Um, we're the first to attend a G20 conference. Um, we're the best. <laughs> I think we should win. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to ask one, because I can. Yes. I so, it all sounds fantastic, wonderful. Well, hey, it's simple. Um, what keeps you awake at night? What's the worry? Where's the, where's the little flaw that you're trying to sort of fix and sort out? There must be something, otherwise I will not believe you. Well, the challenge for us is, is to continue uh, this uh, incredible growth. Um, we are 100 staff members today. We yeah. have um, offices in you know, Hong Kong and Shanghai. Uh, it's growing fast, and um, uh, the world embraces us, um, and uh, we're all about service, and uh, to help you um, win this, okay. this new venture. All right, I can feel the love. <laughs> I'm going to quickly come to our judges before I get an indication from you. Just give me a... I'm going to rule you out, Chris. I'm sorry, you're out. Okay, but Juliet, just give us the heads up. Are you feeling excited about this? I, I think it's fascinating. Really cool. Nice to... Thank you for sharing it with us. Okay. Is, so that, is that disruptive? Oh. Is that disruptive? Don't know. Okay, so our things are our key scales for judging this is is it disruptive or is it just kind of mm? is it scalable? Is it going to in five years' time have transformed elements of the real estate in in industry? With your voting wands and now I just want to give an indication if you're thinking, hmm, next one please, leave it down there. If you feel the room full of enthusiasm, just stick it up in the air now. Okay, let me get an indication. What do you feel about this one? Now. Okay, you can sort of do a half wobble, 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 wobble if you like. Okay, okay, so yeah, that for a first one. I think we're on, you've got some friends out there, so that's good. 
Thank you very much. Okay, so we are going to our second digital disruptor, question mark. Please welcome to the platform Ross Bailey from Appear Here UK. Great to have you with us and in your own time, no, not in your own time, in my time, four minutes starts now. Having a good idea is easy. Making it happen. That's hard. So ask yourself, what did you make today? You wake up, you work hard, you do it again. Because it takes everything you've got to bring an idea to life. But there's a magic in having something that's yours like that. Something you've built. Something that's a piece of you. And along the way, you'll make mistakes. So make them count. You'll have your late nights. Your lonely days, your fair share of letdowns, but they won't stop you. Because all great ideas came from nothing. They started inside, inside your head, your heart, your garage. But inside is only so big. Out there, there's opportunity. There's space to show the world what your idea can do. Give your ideas the space to grow, and anything's possible. Up here, here, space for ideas. Hi, so my name is Ross Bailey and I'm the CEO of Appear Here. And Appear Here is the leading marketplace globally to rent retail space. So what did that video mean by making ideas happen? Well, at Appear Here, we take entrepreneurs, retailers, and the biggest brands and help them find space online. Spaces from high street shops to locations like Box Park to some of the most luxury destinations like the Burlington Arcade and we make it all happen on an online marketplace. From finding the space, to signing the legals, to paying seamlessly on our marketplace. And we make it as easy as booking a hotel room. So, why is this disruptive? Well, the year I was born, 1992, the average lease in the UK was 20 years. Today, it's under five. But the way we rent space hasn't changed for the past hundred years. It averagely takes three to six months. There's multiple intermediaries. And what we're trying to do is match landlords and tenants directly, making it go from three to six months to averagely last month, 48% of all, sorry, 50% of all bookings for appear here took 48 hours. Over 10,000 brands and retailers are currently using our platform. Just in London, 650 shops launched last year in 12 months. Over 2,000 years, two centuries, worth, two millenniums worth of ideas are currently waiting to find space on our marketplace. And we're working with some of the very biggest and best landlords. But not only are these landlords using our platform to rent space, they're using our data and our understanding of the market to change the way they manage and build properties. TFL, the first tubes network in the world, used to appear here to put this, what was a crappy tube station in East London on our marketplace. In six months, they've had over a hundred ideas launching that station. They've increased rents by over a hundred percent and they've had a 98% occupancy. Our vision at Appear here is the same way you can go on Airbnb and rent a shop, rent a space anywhere in the world to stay overnight. You're gonna be able to go on Appear here and rent space in any city 
to make your idea happen. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Ross. Great. Okay, over to our judges who'd like to offer a first thought. Wow, my, Chris. My, my first thought is that that is, that is disruptive. That's my first thought. Um, I think it's a great presentation. Thank you. I would like to have the motorcycle in the ad, please. A good motorcycle, right? Do you have one? They, we can give you the shot. Terrific address. Terrific you know answer. Here. Great presentation. Uh, look, uh, the, 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 the key part for me, the takeaway, uh, was the, the 1992 comparison to today comparison. Um, 20 years to five years. Something's clearly happening in the space. We have a commercial development platform. We're going to take a look at your company. Okay. Great idea, thank you. Juliet, share the enthusiasm. I've had the privilege of watching Ross grow his business for the last year or so, and I can absolutely um, testify that you have certainly changed how real estate is accessed in London. Better than that, you've given entrepreneurs who otherwise would be excluded from real estate spaces the opportunity to bring forward products that we wouldn't otherwise see. So not only have you changed the real estate landscape, I actually think you've changed the innovation landscape as well. That's a comment. Um, I guess my question is, clearly there's a big challenge in terms of feeding your business. What, what's the biggest challenge you face in terms of growing, whether it's access to spaces or, or the database of companies who will join you on that global journey? Um, I, I guess there's one big problem, and uh, it's not a problem, I guess there's one challenge, and that's supply. You know, we have got 2,000 years worth of ideas waiting to happen. And we've got everyone from Google and Microsoft and Netta Porter launching shops with us to over 70-80% of our users are small independent entrepreneurs just starting on their journey. And we need more spaces because we're, we're filling them too quickly. Which is a good problem to have. Okay, before Sir Mooney comes in, just, I feel they're giving you, a, you an easy ride at the moment. I've got some nasty, evil, difficult questions for him. Hashtag digital q and a and Joanna will be coming forward in a moment with a couple of thoughts. Sir Mooney. Well, you're stating you're the global leader for this kind of marketplace, so who's yep. the global number two, and <laughs> why better than they are? So, honestly, I haven't seen you in German market so far. Yeah, um, so there are a couple of competitors. I'm not going to name them because uh, I'm here. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, we, we're, we're leading because we've got more spaces. We've also got more brands, um, and we're, we're growing very quickly. But what we are very focused on is delivering a great service. So things that we've added above and beyond anyone else in this market is we've got a service team that is run by, um, I don't know if anyone here knows Virtu, but the luxury phone company. So we have a concierge team who are delivering an incredible service if someone needs help hand-holding, right? And every single person on that team has launched shops. So we've got people who have launched shops for Burberry, down to entrepreneurs who have their own retail brands that are there on top of the platform helping you find space. Well, taking the size of the business of the of real estate, um, you delivered or you uh, um, had some 650 com uh, uh, shops? 650 shops in London, yeah. It doesn't sound that much at all for the real estate space globally. Because if you're a global yeah. leader, doing 650 a year, sounds like that's a mini market. I'm yeah, not I mean, at all. so what's exciting there is we're just starting, right? We're 18 months in, and uh, most people in the market are at a similar age. Um, but, but when you said in terms of the real estate market in total, we were talking about London. If you add up every single agent in London, in the West End, I was part of a report last week for the London West End, and the data shows that 85 new stores launched last year. That's adding Cushman & Wakefield, JLL, Saviare. JLL has a market cap of what, 9 to 12 billion? 85 shops appear here in W1 and W2 last year, the same area, launched 85 shops. Okay, so could you, could you give me some numbers? What is this 650 companies in terms of revenue for you? Uh, how is the business model in that, that sense then? Well, look, we're a private company, so I'm not going to go into our revenue, but what I will say is that um, the average lease that rents on appear here is six weeks. Um, every month we're averagely launching now three to four shops a day, which is growing. And as a business, we grew over 500% last year in both revenue and booking numbers. And that revenue is in the millions. Okay, I'm just going to see whether Joanna's got one to come in with. Anything happening? Or are they all asleep out there? Or are they a gog? Wake up. No, 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 no. They're busy. They're busy. Actually, Ross has already uh, answered a few of the questions that came in from our uh, audience. 
Uh, however, we have uh, one, one audience member that says, appear here means the end of brokers. Does it? Um, look, I don't know. I mean, we're building a tool. And that tool can be used by brokers, it can be used by landlords, it can be used by anyone. But my feeling is that if agents are delivering a great service and that real one-to-one -one experience, then they can use Appear Here as a tap for new demand. But I also know a lot of landlords who aren't getting necessarily that great service, and if they're bringing great teams in-house, then we're bringing them the opportunity to channel exciting ideas and take control of them themselves. So ultimately, if you're delivering a great service, I don't think you'll get disrupted. Great. Okay, time's on our friend. I just need to get an indication from yourselves. Sounds like a contender or not? Some of these, start with you. I like a lot of it, but I don't know if you're the winner, we'll see. Okay, Juliet. I'm a fan, he's birthing ideas, I'm a fan. Okay, Chris. I like a lot of it. Okay. What's going on out there? What's the feeling? Give us a, give us a... Okay. Okay. Thank you very much yeah. indeed, Ross. Okay. Ah. And there's no difference between having a yellow one and a green one. So you don't get twice as many votes if yours is a green stick. So that's two down. Very interesting. Here we go for our third from France. Tandoori by Spice Soft. Jean-Marie Sellier, Sellier, welcome very much, and you've got four minutes starting from now. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Jean-Marie, and I will introduce to you uh, Spysoft. We did a new software, a new kind of software, which uh, enable you to make online leasing. Online leasing for small premises, such as accommodation, social, regular, student housing, Small premises like offices, co-working centers, business centers, and also small premises like um, pop-up stores and uh, specialty leasing. So, what do we see? What is our vision of the market? Our vision of the market is that there will be a disruption on this leasing industry. And starting now, there are new platforms, sorry Ross, there are new platforms that appear, like Airbnb. Those people will tell you that your clients are ready. And it's true, people are used to online processes. They will tell you that the technology is mature. And it's also true, because we manage e-signature, and we manage direct debit, on a recurring and large amount. Last and not least, they will tell you that there are lots of benefits. And it's true also, because you will save a lot of time and you will be able to develop cross-selling strategy. But do you want platform to disrupt your market? There are many examples in many different markets where the disruptive platform cornered historical players. Let's talk about hotel, for example. You know that platforms such as Booking.com have been very attractive. But no, the dark side is, and you know that, hotel operators are becoming suppliers. Because when you don't own anymore your clients, because when you give up 15% of your revenue, of your income, you are becoming a supplier. Even Accor, number one, the first hotel operator in the world, just launched two, more than 200 million euros of investment to maybe, maybe, come back in charge of its business. So, I repeat my question. Do you want platform to disrupt your market? For those so we would answer no to this question, and I understand that. We've got a solution. We, get, we are here to offer you the first online leasing software, which means basically you've got the same tools as, as the platforms. You will benefit up to 80% of time saving. You will benefit from cross-selling strategies because you will be able to sell other products. Your product, 
or your partner's product. And you will fulfill your client's need because they're asking for that. The bright side is that you will remain the owner of your leads, your clients, your data. You will be in charge. And I may say, I see on the French croissant, you will be able to open new platforms, but platforms that you will control. So get ready. Try out our online leasing software, and tomorrow you will be the one to disrupt your own market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Indeed, great, thank you. Sorry, who would like to ask the first question? Somebody. Um, yeah, could you give me something? It's, a, it's an online strategy, it's an online business model, uh, you have a solution online, so how is your sales strategy? How are you going to get all these people to use it? Or who is the first customer you're going to talk to? Or who are they? Uh, or, uh, or consumer, or client, we are B2B. Yeah, how do you acquire new customers? So what is your sales strategy? Your own. Our sales strategy is uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got the, the, the big ones, uh, the big uh, solution for big clients, so we know them, we have started in France. Is that your question? Yeah, more or less. And, and then you've, we've got a, a solution which is SaaS, software as a service, which means that uh, you will be able to buy it uh, online and ask it to your developer to install it on your website. In so fact, we are just, sorry, in fact, we are just in between your website, your existing website, and your back office uh, tools. So you're telling me your sales strategy is the people you know and then the SaaS model. So you think you reach all these people through that strategy you're telling me? It, it started because real estate is not a huge market. We, we know each other very well already. Wow. Okay. Chris? Uh, I, don't, I don't know you or by soft. So I, I, again, I, I think I, I didn't get an answer to your question. I, how, how are you initiating and concluding the sales process? Do you have a sales team? Yeah, we have got a sales team, yeah. And, and who's at the top of their call list by, by category? I don't need the company name, but if your salespeople are making calls, who's at the top of their call list? What, what, what player in the industry? I can give you a, a very simple example. In France, we are, for now in France, but uh, in France we are, um, uh, we are tooling up uh, Bouygues, Bouygues, Bouygues and Nexity, which are two of the leaders uh, on the new market of service and office, uh, which is grand new in France. So it's a, a main part of the market and we are talking with a, a lot of people. But the main people, the innovators and the leaders, uh, there are a few of them. And I think uh, most of them are here. Okay. Uh, hashtag digital Q&A, Jaila. Is there any life there? And I'll come to Juliet in just a moment. What's yeah, we've uh, just got one question from, uh, from the audience so far. They're asking if Spysoft is basically a CRM tool. CRM is a consumer relationship management tool. So it's, a, it's part of uh, our, uh, our tool. But the fact is we, we are more an e-commerce solution. Maybe you know about a uh, solution like Magento or PrestaShop, that's huge solution that, is, uh, that are used for e-commerce. Because you don't want to develop your own tool. And we are exactly the same, we are an e-commerce solution but dedicated to leasing in real estate. Okay, Juliet. Gosh, um, I, I suppose my question is, is the industry ready to adopt this? that, that we're, we're a relationships-based industry uh, and there might be a lot of brokers out there thinking, gosh, um, I, I quite like transacting things myself and not online and that's how I've made my entire professional career and hope to end my days doing that brilliantly. So it, it, are you finding there's good adoption from the industry? Are we ready? You know, um, there is a, a, a theory about uh, the adoption cycle and uh, we are clearly on the beginning. And at the beginning, you need to find the nice and good innovators. And there are very few, that's less than 2% of the market. So, for now, we are dealing with those people that see the danger arriving. And, yeah, we basically, basically, we think that with Airbnb, with a lot of new platforms, the disruption is already arriving. Okay. 
All right, just to take a view from the three of you, just about your level of enthusiasm, major disruptor, transforming the marketplace. Comment from you, Samini. I'm not convinced. Okay, Juliet? Um, I work for a brokerage house, so I'll probably get fired if I say that we, we'd love to buy it straight away. Um, I guess we'd love to see you succeed and, and watch that play out. Okay, and Chris? Certainly lots of potential, certainly want to follow the story. Okay, thank you very much. And just an indication from out there, who's getting excited by this one? You just wanted to wave it, didn't you? It's just good. Okay, thank you very thank much, you very much. Uh, John. Is it fantastic. So that's three down. We're now coming to our fourth. Okay, so our fourth is Michael Mandel from Compstack from the US of A. Good to have you with us. And your time starts now. All right. My name is Michael Mandel. I'm co founder and CEO of Compstack. And we create transparency in com the commercial real estate market transforming the way that commercial real estate investors, lenders, and asset managers make investment and lending decisions. In the past year alone, more than 50% of the top 30 global real estate investors became Comstack customers. These are just a few of our customers today. Why are they Comstack customers? Because we know what everyone in all of the major markets in, in, in all of the United States pay for commercial office space, retail space, and industrial space. As a frame of reference, this is Facebook's most recent deal in New York City. This deal made waves because it was over $100 a square foot, and it was in a pre-World War II building. But we don't just have the rent for this deal, we also have the square footage information, the tenant improvement allowance, the free rent period, the names of the agents who did the deal, all of the details. This here is, is Twitter's most recent deal. This is the fourth expansion deal they've done in the past year. I know that because I've got every deal they have in New York City. And this is how you find this information. It's through our platform where you can search through our database by any criteria. You can search by tenant name, by landlord name, by address, by rent, square footage, by the incentives the landlord gave, whatever criteria you would like. First pass underwriting from a real estate investor could take a week or more. And main, mainly that time is digging up data. On Comstack, we take it down to an hour, and the time spent actually looking for data is minutes. Due diligence and actually underwriting deals, deals are done with three to four pieces of information. With Comstack, you have three to four hundred deals at your fingertips when you actually underwrite a deal. This is how a real estate investor got lease deal information in the past. Calling up whatever agents they know and saying, hey, can you give me the comp? And, and you just have to hope that what they're giving you is comprehensive and actually accurate. Now they go on Comstack. In the past three years in New York, we have 99% of the commercial office deals that have taken place. And we have similar coverage in the other major markets in the United States that we're in. This is the Grand Central submarket in Manhattan. It's a small area around Grand Central Terminal, the train station. There's 148 buildings in that market that have done deals in the past year. I can tell you instantly on our platform that the average starting rent was $56.30 and the average tenant improvement was $42.41. But our data is not just for the past year. Our data goes back over 10 years. And so I can tell you that these are the dots of the 2,300 deals that took place in Grand Central in the past 10 years. And of those, we can see a red trend line to see how rents have trended, but I can get more specific. I can show you exactly the rent trend line for Class A office buildings or Class B office buildings. And this is real data off our platform. But we don't have to just do it for rents. We could do it for tenant improvement allowance, for free rent, whatever information you'd like. So where does this data come from? Well, this is really our secret sauce. It comes from our proprietary crowdsource platform. It's called Comstack Exchange. And the way it works is commercial real estate agents, appraisers, and researchers share commercial lease comps on Comstack. They earn credits for sharing those comps. It's like a virtual currency. And they could use those comps to get th those credits to get other comps out. It's roughly <coughs> one for one. For every comp they put in, they get one out. And we end up with a comprehensive database of all the deals done in the market, which is fully searchable by them and available to our customers. We're in 14 major markets in the US and we have 12 more on the horizon. That represents over 50,000 properties 3.5 billion square feet and counting, 
over 200,000 lease comps, of which we've had to receive over a million and filter out duplicates to get to refined, accurate information. My name is Michael Mandel. CompStack brings better data and better deals. If you have any questions, please come speak to me. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks. Okay, who would like to kick off? Sorry. Big data, interesting. Is that what you call it? Is it big data business? I don't know that we would call ourselves a big data business. There's certainly a lot of data. We have several million data points because there's you know, roughly 25 data points for every single lease comp, and we've got hundreds of thousands of lease comps. Um, so you know, depending on how you define big data, I guess you can say. Okay, because there's a follow-up question to that. So for me, it looks like it's, it's a dashboard. I, I like the way you collect the data. That's pretty smart. Sure. So what's happening behind that instead of showing the data you collected? What is the intelligence you want to, going to want to move into as a next step? Sure, so we actually have an, an enterprise platform where we provide advanced analytics on top of the data. So for instance, you could give us any building and we could tell you what buildings are in the comp set of that building based off of different building information that we cross-reference, like the year it was built, proximity to public transportation, the, the rents in that building, the floors in the building, what have you. And we could tell you with a high level of accuracy which buildings are really comparable to it. So when you're analyzing an investment, you can see the ones nearby. Uh, we show you rent trends over time. We can help you see where trends are going before they happen. There's a lot of interesting ways we can dive into the data, and we've only just started to scratch the surface. Okay. Uh, hashtag digital Q and A for you to ask the questions, Chris. Yeah, uh, you know, the space I don't know a lot about, but what little I do know, it seems to me that's a fairly crowded space that you're in. Is is that accurate? And if it's not, tell us why. If it is. How do you differentiate from the competitors? Sure. So, so the answer is it's not, it's not accurate. Um, commercial lease information is really not very transparent today. Um, in the US, it's not publicly recorded, and in very few countries, is it publicly recorded. Commercial sales comps are publicly recorded in the, in the US in most states. Um, so this information really can only be gathered through the people doing the deals. And so there is no other major database that has all this information in it, and we've created that. Um, it really only can be gathered through crowdsourcing. Okay, Joanna, can I say Joanna? Joanna's coming in just a moment, but Juliet, first of all. Um, I was going to ask how you're defensible. Well, the, there's, there's several reasons, but first we've got a very complex, you know, sophisticated technology platform that we've built. We bring in an average of 25 to 30,000 new comps every single month. We have to process that data, we have to clean it up, we have to refine it, deal with duplicates, and make sure the information is accurate. We've spent years developing our infrastructure to do that the past three years. Um, beyond that, in the markets that we're in, we have virtually all the data. And so, you know, there's really no reason to go anywhere else than the platform that has the data. This is a classic chicken and the egg type of business. You need to have the, both the users going on to, to provide the data, and the data has to be there for them to get it out. We've created a platform and a means of which we can incentivize people to give the information. And once we're in a market, it's very hard for someone else to come in. Joanna, what's going on out Yes, there? I. In fact, you, you might have answered a few of those questions. But we have a lot of... Um, uh, participants in the audience who are asking how exactly do you get all the data and then after have you validated what is the validation process sure okay so just to make it very clear so commercial real estate agents appraisers and researchers <laughs> share lease counts on comstack they are in credits for submitting that data so they get one credit for each piece of information in the comp one credit for the landlord name one for the tenant name one for the rent one for the square footage and they can then use those credits to get other comps out. But all of our data comes from our members who share it. And then to validate the data, the first thing we do is we use machine learning and statistical anomaly detection that allows us to find outliers in the data. Then every single comp that goes into our system gets reviewed by our analysts. They review the outliers, they also look to see who gave us the comp. Is it somebody who's given us great data in the past or someone who's brand new to CompStack? Um, then they make phone calls often if they need to and they validate the data by calling one of the brokers of the deal or, or one of our members who works for one of the firms that did the deal and ask them to check it. But I think you know, the best testament to the quality of our data is the fact of who our clients are. When we sell to somebody like an equity office properties or a JP Morgan or a Wells Fargo or a Tishman Spire, we go into their offices and they say, okay, I want you to pull up this building and this building and this building. And we have to have all of their deals and the data has to be accurate. And if it's not, they're not going to pay us for it. Okay, thank you very much. Get a comment from you all before I go to the audience. Digital disruptor, scalable, global. What's your thinking? I'll come to you first, Julian. It sounds as though your platform is built off a lot of trust and traction in 
it's principally the New York market, and so I'm, I'm interested in how you're going to scale that into new markets because it sounds like you need to pre-populate a lot of it to get traction. Uh, and so I can absolutely see the power of it. I can certainly see the industry wanting it and, and making sure that they're not you know, wholly reliant on other players in that space. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the scaling that everyone's talking about big data, so I think you're in a really hot space. Give you a one-liner, so life beyond New York. Sure. Well, we're actually in 14 major markets in the U.S., pretty much all the major markets, San Francisco, D.C., L.A., Chicago, Dallas, Atlanta, Houston, etc., etc. And um, actually, I'm going to be in London next week. We're working on expansion into the London market, which will be our first international market. So we have a, we have a means for seeding our platform in, in, new, uh, in new markets, and it's been very successful okay. so far. Final comments to Lily? Um, Getting your money out of the wallet to invest in this one? I'm about to do it, yeah. Okay. No, um, <laughs> uh, um, I think the data will be the big disruptor, so uh, disruption is, is definitely visible in your case. I like okay. it. I really like it. And just a word from you, Chris. Um, I, I have nothing to add. I think that we talked a lot about big data before the uh, show started tonight, or today. Uh, so anything associated with big data, I think the three of us all agree that there's something there. So, what do we think of Michael and his idea? Some enthusiasm? Some enthusiasm. You're in the you're in the hunt. Congratulations. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. We're now going to our fifth. Uh, Scott Picken, uh, Wealth Migrate. I think you're from South Africa. Is that right? So four minutes. The chance to transform your life and all of ours starts now. Let me disrupt you. Please all stand up. Please stand up. I want to welcome you to the future of real estate. In the next four minutes, we are not only going to show you something that is going to disrupt real estate, but we are going to give you a solution which will solve our planet's greatest challenge. major forces which are changing the way that we live today. The first is the economic force and ultimately what is basically happening is that investors do not trust the government. Investors are chasing yield and investors are investing internationally. The second is social. It is the difference of the wealth gap. It is the change from individualism to collaboration. And the third is technology. It is the internet disruption. It is the adoption. And it is the change in regulation. And it all leads us to the idea of crowdfunding. It is endorsed by the top four consultancies around the world to be one of the 10 top trends in 2015 to be disruptive. But what does it mean to real estate? The bottom line is the real estate model was set up for failure. Investors do not trust the system. There's a very limited amount of transparency and the returns are diluted by excessive fees. If you want to disagree, let's look at the facts. 12.9% of the world's population has access to real estate. Less than 1% can actually retire wealthy. And so I want to share with you a new solution, real estate crowdfunding, one where investors from all over the world can access the best opportunities through online. Our president, Dr. Dolph DeRus, is a respected authority on international real estate and education. They can go online, they can access quality deals with quality information and quality partners. Let me give you an example of success. This is a medical portfolio in America, $16 million. We managed to save a million dollars for the investors up front. 
We raise six million dollars on five continents. And the best part about it is that they have reinvested 70% in the last month. We're also the 10th biggest now globally in the latest report that came out. This industry is worth a billion dollars. It's expected to be 2.5 billion this year and 250 billion by 2020. The internet has disrupted many technologies. Why will real estate be any different? The last question I have for you is I implore all of you to join the wealth movement. Our mission is to empower a billion people through the use of the wealth effect in real estate by 2020. It is not only important for you individually for your personal wealth, but for us to create a better and more sustainable planet. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, indeed. So, hashtag digital Q&A. What are your questions to Scott? We'll warm you up. Who would like to start? Juliet? Sure. Um, I'm fascinated, really passionate presentation. Um, I guess I'm really interested in how you deal with money laundering, how, how you deal with the regulation of it. We, we, we're under pretty strict guidelines about capital flows and where they come from and the quality of the money and the transparency of that money. Can you comment a bit about how that works? Very much so. We're privileged we come from a real estate background. We've been doing this for over 30 years, helping people invest internationally. And so really in terms of what you're talking about, compliance, money laundering, technology is just enabling that. They're not making it any different. So you still have to know your client, they still have to do, go through all the details, and depending on the different countries, there's different restrictions and different needs. And that, to be honest, is our knowledge base that we brought before the technology enabled this to happen easier. Chris. I'm still sort of thinking of my question, but I'll give you an A-plus for showmanship. I thought the confidence that you uh, demonstrated in presenting was, was solid. Um, get with, wildebeest in the room, get, we'll get ex extra yeah. points. I was a little nervous when I saw the shark, I, I got a little scared. Uh, but you, so, so you say empower one billion people by 2020. Roadmap us to that one billion number. Uh, how many transactions do you have under your belt now? How many transactions are you going to have under your belt in the next 12 months? The most important thing about crowdfunding is it's about collaboration. This is not about me, it's not about the company, it's about every single person in this room, it's about governments, it's about a mindset shift. That billion people is not just attributed to Wealth Migrate, it's attributed to every crowdfunder out there, every organization to empower it to make it happen. And in simple terms, our aim is to get it down to an individual where it's one person, one dollar, one investment. And when you think about the scale and the impact that you can have, in China with a billion people, in Africa with a billion people, and in India with a billion people. That is certainly something that's very possible with the use of technology. Lovely sounding answer, answered like an American politician because I didn't get my numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody can prize open some Read them numbers. Yeah, some numbers. Yeah. Um, how do you want to manage the crowd if there are many investors in there? I mean, first of all, I mean, the expectations, uh, what if something goes wrong? Secondly, they're going to have millions of questions about if, all kinds of things. How do you want to manage that huge crowd you're going to have there on board? Look, from my experience, investors want all the information. They want it up front. And the most important thing is that through the education process, you're allowing them, teaching them what they need to ask before they actually get involved. Secondly, before they get involved, you give them all the information so that they've got the transparency. And then, once they're invested, there's obviously an online collaboration platform, not just from ourselves, not just from our partners, but from fellow investors to be able to talk, to engage, and to find solutions. But we all know that doesn't work that way. I mean, they will call you, your phones will be ringing, they will ask you the same things eight times, uh, and repeating the stuff, not understanding, and we're talking about a lot of people calling it. So how do you handle with that? And especially when the things start to go wrong in crowdfunding, which I'm very scared of in that sense, um, I think you have a big problem there. Look, I think you're 100% right. But the challenge is, what's happening on, from a technology perspective is that this one-to-one -one is changing. People want the information, they want access to the information, and you can get it online. But there's always going to be, certainly for the next 10 to maybe even 20 years, the human touch component. And just like other industries, we will have to have a component where people can talk to people, whether okay. it's online or over the telephone. All right, Joanna. Sure, we've got several questions actually that echo some of the thoughts of our jury. Um, really, the, the issue is here, how do you create trust 
and what's your plan to create that trust? Because obviously it's, it's really risky. Um, and then I have another one. How does the setup prevent people from setting up a scam targeting overseas investors via your platform? So it kind of Perfect. goes together. Great questions. Look, having done this personally for over 16 years now, having helped personally 2,200 international investors invest on four different continents, the first one of trust is solved through education, through teaching people what is possible, teaching them what to look for, and also teaching them what not to look for. Secondly, it's about finding quality partners on the ground. Our philosophy is not to be a free market and to have as many stands and have diversity. Because in a flea market you have good and you have bad. Our philosophy is to have Harrods. We basically want to have less diversity but have quality partners on the ground. And in terms of scams and being set up, it very much comes down to the quality of the partners on the ground. We've got Grant Thornton as one of our partners on board for our tax, our compliance and our structuring, one of the top five accounting firms worldwide to make sure that that's all being audited up front. Okay, thank you. Just a comment from our judges. So is this a lion out front or one of the wildebeest? What's your feelings? Chris? I think it's closer, closer to a lion uh, because I think what they're doing is tapping into, as, as Scott said, one of the major trends that we're going to be faced with over the next 10 years. I know we're paying close attention to it. Uh, so, you know, who knows whether Scott's company is the one that captures the uh, prey. If it's the video, it could well be. I think, I think the most important thing is that it doesn't matter whether it's us or anyone else, it's going to happen just like every other industry's happened already. Okay, Juliet. There's a lot written about wisdom of crowds and whether they're smart or otherwise. Um, I, I guess for me, I'm worried about what happens with flight of capital. So the, on the one hand, I really like the democratization of it. The other is I, I worry about the flight and the wisdom. So I, I think I'm kind of in the middle on this one. Okay, I feel the flight of birds, similarly. Um, I see the opportunity, um, but I'm worried about the crowdfunding of, uh, approach. Okay, so uh, where are we on out there? Some enthusiasm. There's enthusiasm for you, so you're in the hunt. Thank you very much indeed, Scott. So we're now going to move to France. Uh -huh, we are in France. And Spallion and Renaud Proveur. Your four minutes to convince us of a global tectonic shift starts now. Thank you. Big data is indeed big, but smart data is better. We all face the same paradox. The more we have data, the less we have information. When we need to leave an investment, it's really important to have the best information at the right moment. Because we all have the same enemy, and especially me today, time. So I'm going to show you all through our mapping, decision-making tool, Corto, we can lead an investment by having an overview about all the available data. All my examples will be based on open data, and because, as we are used to say, a map is better than a million and it's 1,000 words, I'm going to show you some examples of what we can do with this system. First of all, when you need to lead an investment, it's really important to see the kind of risk you can face. Here, in my first example, you can have information about in blue, all the rain, all the storm in the United States. In uh, red, you have all the hurricane, and you can have with this symbol, proportional symbol, the level of damage property due to this natural risk. If you need to invest now in, uh, in San Francisco, it could be also quite interesting to see exactly what kind of uh, criminality could be close to one of your projects. Here you can have your project, and here you've got all the free SFPD database which can show you exactly what is the worst place in San Francisco in terms of criminality. For sure, what we do in San Francisco, we can do it so much easily also in Lagos. If you are here, an outdoor project, you can see the criminality in Lagos and the piratry in Lagos. It's quite interesting in a passive way to see exactly which could attend to your investment, but it's also interesting to use that system for market intelligence. In my first example here, you can see always moving the building market close to Paris. You have in red the number of building licenses during this last 10 year, and you have in blue the number of, of building licenses this new year. So you can see how a market is moving. You can also see the profile of the market. Here you have an information about tenants in pink versus owner in blue, and number of people living. The more it's red, the more you have people living in this place. You can also use that system when you want to 
see what opportunity you can have. Here is all the free territory where you could build a real investment real estate program. You can see where you have an important number of, uh, of a free place to build something. And then you can cross that information with, for example, the medium revenue. We know here that people is earning about 40,000 euro a year where you have a lot of place to build something. You can also see what is the profile of your potential customer. Here you have the age, in clear blue, young people. And then you can cross that information of your young people with, uh, for instance, the existing uh, real estate program for young people. Here you got all the youth for the program for young people in green. And you can see that in that place you have nothing, so it could be quite interesting to build something new. It works in Europe, it works in the United States, but it also works in Africa. Here you have the flow of investment from Europe to South Africa. The color here means the building human resource. So you know here that you have a good building human resource to build something. And there is here, as you can see, like a small paradise because the arrows show the importance of flow of money. The flow of money is usually connected to the potential of building something in red here, except in this country in Guinea. But you can easily understand that because if I use my last example, you can see here that you have to face 29 procedure number before uh, creating any real estate program instead of here where you just need to have 10 procedure number. So the only thing I wanted to show through this uh, short experience is that the rule has changed with digital now. It's not the amount of information which counts. What you need is to have uh, the fast and reliable information. You know, right now, velocity defeats volume. That's why definitely smart uh, information and smart data is better than big data. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much, Dean. Great presentation. Hashtag digital Q and A. Who'd like to smile? I don't know, it's a microphone. Yeah, it's back on the track again. Um, where do you get this data? So what is the what is the background of that? First of all. Believe and it will be. Oh no, yeah. I can stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Make a little bit politician, but it's easier for the camera as well. <laughs> you will vote for me. Um, well, you have three uh, sources of data. All those, those examples are coming from open data from United Nations, from uh, the country open data resource. Uh, you have a lot, a lot of open data. We have more than 4 million of information all around the world. Then, imagine what we can do if we integrate your own data. You are all professional, you are all living a mountain of information, but you know, sometimes you're living on a gold mountain of information and you are digging with a spoon. So what we do, we connect our system to all the data, open data, existing data such as CRM for instance, and then we can integrate data coming from social networks. So we can see all uh, what is the trends, what is the needs of people. Well, let me follow up on that one. So how do you guarantee the quality of the data, data you're using? That's, that's something really important, you know, that's the kind of service we can bring. We have people which are specially trained to analyze, it's, it's like uh, the intelligence uh, uh, part of our work, we, uh, we will qualify the data from the source, from the importance, detail of the data, the frequency of the data. So we do that job before pushing the data of our own server. And then your own data. It's uh, also uh, your responsibility to be sure that your data is quite good. Chris. So it sounds like you have at least two revenue streams, a subscription revenue stream, stream and then a customized client service revenue stream where you're customizing data scenarios for clients. Are there any others that you have, that you haven't mentioned? Well, this is one of our products. We have many products based on data, but most of all, we ran that system to uh, thousand euro a month for five users. We work with about uh, 600 cities around the world, because this is the part for real estate. But imagine a mayor, we can lead his city and lead his project if he, uh, if he has an overview about health, security, building, everything. So, we read the system and some of our clients can ask us for specific service. You know, a few times ago we have a, a big uh, uh, pharmacy company who say, I want to know where diabetes will be a real problem in the five next years. So by using, you know, data from the World Health Organization, Big Mac rate, Coca-Cola rate, number of, uh, of um, business class in the flight going to this country, uh, resource by person. You can have a lot of global information 
and see where it could be really strategic for them to install a new activity. Joanna, how are we doing? Okay, we've got a question from the audience. Nice product. Thank you. First of all. Is that, that your comment? comment? No, that's that from the audience. I'm only you and I are here. completely impartial. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What advantage do you have when using public data sources? Well, first advantage that I say, you can have an overview really fast when you need to, to, uh, to identify a potential market. Second advantage, everything you have seen has been built by our company. You know? It's not Google, it's our own map engine, because imagine when you work for a, a health program around the world, there is something critical uh, of the data, of the data. So we protect the data, we have a plug-and-play system, and it's really customizable. You know, it's very strong scalability. Okay, thank you. Juliet. I'm interested in how you describe yourself. Do you view yourself as a property tech company, a smart cities company? I'm just interested in where you think you sit in that space. Well, indeed, what we do, we make big data speak on a map to another strategic decision. So it can be quite interesting when you've got a real estate decision to take, or every kind of strategic decision, from the public side to the private side. As I said, we face the same enemy. You need to have the right decision in a really short moment. Okay, I just want one liner from each of you as to whether you're getting excited about this or otherwise. Sorry. I like data. I'm a bit worried if that's relevant, the data you're collecting for the decision maker or the buyer or the seller or anything like that. Uh, it's a, if it's an earthquake, it probably is. is that, I don't know. Do you want to give a quick answer to that one? Well, no, it, it, it is about the quality of the data, you know, it, it's, it's a growing market now. You have so much open data right now that only with open data you can have really, really strategic information. And really, once again, imagine when you integrate your own data. So that's... So I suppose there is more data than what you showed us. Mm. Okay, lots more. As much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, quick comment. Really like the visualization, really like the open data initiative aspect of it. I think there's infinitely more legs to be put on the quality of the data that goes in there. Yeah. Chris, word from you? Concerned about competition and then just the crowded nature of the big data space. It seems like I read about a new company like yours every week. All of them sound extremely compelling, tough to differentiate. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Renault, ladies and gentlemen, who's getting excited about this program, this project? Spanian. <laughs> You're not going to make it difficult at the end by all voting for all of them, are you? No, I hope not. So, very good. Thank you very much, indeed, Renault. And we're now, we're on the home straight. Henry Stewart, visualise you from the UK. That's right. Thank so, you. your four minutes starts now. Henry, you. off you go. Hi, everyone. I'm Henry Stewart from Visualize. Uh, we're a virtual reality agency. So we specialize in making experiences that you can completely immerse yourself in. Um, but before I start, I want to check with the audience. You should put your glow sticks in the air if you've actually had a go with any virtual reality. So more than I expected, actually, there's still a huge amount of you who won't really have a clue what I'm talking about. And you won't really know until you actually try it yourself. But you put a headset on, like the one we've got over here, um, and when it's on, you're completely immersed. You can look all around you, absolutely anywhere, and then you can interact with that environment as well. So um, don't just take it from me, from Mark Zuckerberg. Um, one day we believe virtual reality will become part of the daily life for billions of people. So not only does he believe that, but he then invested two billion, and Facebook bought Oculus Rift, which is the main hardware supplier in this, in, in this field. Um, so not only Oculus though, Samsung have come into the game with the, the Gear VR headset, HTC, Sony have produced a headset, and Google have produced something called Google Cardboard, which really democratizes the whole industry. So big players are getting into this, and it's starting to be a very disruptive technology in a huge number of industries. And interestingly, automotive industry is the first to really pick it up. Um, sport, uh, you start to get a lot of kind of live streaming into VR so people can put a headset on and watch a, an incredible sports match. But property has been the real elephant in the room, um, the sleeping giant. And there's a better case for VR and property than there is in, in almost any other industry. So um, we were asked to come along to Miffim and produce a, 
a VR example to show how VR can be used in property. And um, what we produced, uh, actually, it, we took a kind of Bond villain's lair style property, and we, we modeled it, uh, lit it, and uh, put this in front of the user. So you put a headset on, and you see this kind of doll's house in front of you, and you can actually lean down and peer into the windows like a giant, and take steps to the side. And then you can grab, using your hand, you can grab this virtual model and actually turn it in front of you. So you can see your hands inside there as well, which is quite a big step forward in, in VR. So using this technology, you can jump to different rooms as well. Um, you could use a game controller to actually move through the corridors and into you know, all around the property and really explore it. Um, so one of the really special things here is, is not just the ability to look at a property privately, but to actually connect with someone on the other side of the world as well. So you can be in London talking to your client in the UAE uh, who's exploring a property um, which he's looking to buy in France or wherever and actually talk them through what they're seeing with a headset on yourself. They've got a headset on and you're both exploring an, uh, the property. So in terms of why it's disruptive, um, from all the things up there, I think the absolute most important thing is that you're not just viewing a property and trying to make an impression of it from a flat piece of paper or from a video. You're actually able to experience and feel the property. You're, you're able to know it's so realistic now that you feel like you're inside the property. Um, uh, you can block buy off plan. Uh, it's completely honest as well. So you, you know, it, there's no surprises when you come to buy the property because you've actually been there and stood there. But it doesn't need to be just for sales. It can also be an incredibly powerful tool for developers. So architects could put themselves in a property and look for faults, see what it's going to feel like for someone who's actually going to live in that property or for a client who's going to buy the property. So thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you very much. Can you visualise this one? See what our judges have to say. This is not the first time we've seen the technology, but it's the appliance of it that's very interesting. Chris? Yes, uh, we, you know, we, I think all of the judges tried this out um, in advance of uh, the presentation, and I think we all got motion sickness at some level or differentiated uh, level. Uh, and, and, you know, we hear about a, a lot of technologies in this area. I'll ask the same question yeah. that I asked your predecessor. It, it seems like it's becoming a crowded area. I feel like I get a, a VR note every week telling me to try this out. It's going to change the way we sell property abroad. How do you respond to the crowding of the space or do you see it that way? Um, I think a lot of people are going to rush into it in the first instance. And as you mentioned there about the motion sickness, that's a huge problem at the moment. And it's something which all the big players are working on. So as the devices get faster, high resolution screens, and we as content providers get better at learning how to make that tech, it's going to, it's going to let the, the people who are very good at VR and make those comfortable experiences rise to the top. And the rest of that crowded industry is going to fall away. Uh, but the crucial thing is making good VR, which is comfortable. The experience that I showed you here was a 360 degree video moving through a property. Uh, it's that kind of movement which can be a trigger for motion sickness. So the main example I've shown on the slides up here that you can see at the, the Cushman and Wakefield stand has none of that movement. You're from static positions. You can hold your hand up in front of you and each of your fingers will show an option of a room to go to. And then you use your other hand and point at that option and you jump immediately to that room. So it takes away the motion, um, which takes away the sickness. Plus by doing it on a computer rather than on a, a mobile phone like I showed you, it's a much more powerful uh, machine to get the speed up. Okay, and you sure it wasn't a glass of wine you had lunchtime? <laughs> okay, Juliet. Oh gosh, I have so many questions. Um, I suppose for me the question is are consumers ready? Um, it's, it's quite an interesting experience putting on a headset and um, I've watched people worry about hat hair and all that stuff. <laughs> These are the important questions. Yeah, yeah, no, but genuinely actually, it, it, it is, I'm, I'm interested in your perspective on the, on the willingness of consumers to, to physically wear technology. To look stupid. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to take a bit of getting used to for people. I think it's going to be a bit of a culture change when uh, as more of these headsets are around, people are going to get used to having ruffled up hair. Um, yeah, we, we, I do see that, people kind of watching their hair afterwards, but still, you get people queuing up at events to try this on, and there's so many takers. And the, the kind of uh, feedback you get from people when they do do this is so powerful. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bigger step forward, I think, in media consumption than anything since the TV. 
in terms of the, the revolutionary way it feels to be inside somewhere and forget the real world. Right. Well, this is, this is clear an R&D project, so I think you're pretty early still in that, not all that space. If I still, I would agree with you, say, okay, there's a need there, users there, and all that stuff. So well, I still see a problem of producing this 3D content or this virtual spaces. So looking into your becoming business model, I think you have a huge scalability issue there. So me as an investor, I would say, Oof, that's kind of a problem in that space. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So what we have to do is um, work out how we can build a team of the right developers and build a network as well of people who can do 3D modeling for us or lighting and all the different pieces that we need to be able to scale when needed. And at the moment, we've been producing these projects for big brands like Samsung for advertising and automotive around the world. So we've had to pull teams together for that, and we know we can do it again. For something like property VR, it can be quite a modular thing. So we could definitely scale either with network or bringing people in-house. Okay. Joanna, just a quick one coming from the audience. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a question in. What exactly are you selling? The service of creating it like a 2D CGI currently? Production time's long enough, even for 2D now. How do you compete? Well, we, um, we took two weeks before Mepim to produce uh, a 3D, uh, completely immersive, with hand tracking, like kind of minority report style controls, and the positional tracker to allow you to move within around a kind of one metre uh, square on the floor. And we did all that in, in two weeks um, within our team, whilst delivering a few other projects. So it's totally um, scalable in that sense, yeah. Okay, just going to go for one word from you in terms of Wild enthusiasm, middling, or not sure about this one. Juliet. I, I've experienced it and it is actually magical. So I, I think from that perspective, the fact it reduces travel, people who are foreign investors can, can look inside somewhere, yeah. somewhere else is amazing. Okay, so there are many players in that space, so I don't know if you're going to make it. That's my biggest worry. Chris. We've all heard content is king, and Henry, if you can occupy that content space and be the content provider, you've certainly got an excellent product. So over to you, is this a hair disruptor or a digital disruptor of the real estate industry? Where's your enthusiasm? Okay, you're in the hunt. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Wonderful. We're at our last. We've got seven and we've got our final one, number eight, coming up. Welcome check, check. to Brandon Weber, Hightower, Hightower. For the USA, That's four right. minutes start from that. You're the high tower of the group as well, aren't you? So, four minutes, off you go. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for staying awake. Uh, my name is Brandon Weber. I'm the CEO and co-founder of High Tower. Uh, we're the industry's first web and mobile asset management and leasing platform for commercial investors and commercial brokers. Uh, before I get into the solution, let's talk about the problem. So commercial real estate is a paradoxical industry in my point of view. It's a $12 trillion asset class in the United States alone. Uh, we've got over 75 billion square feet of institutionally owned real estate. Um, and it's incredibly data driven. Every single decision we make from an individual lease to an acquisition to a billion dollar disposition is driven by data and analytics. Here's the irony, it's fundamentally powered by a stack of Excel spreadsheets. Whether you're the world's largest institutional owner or you're a mom and pop in the Pacific Northwest with five assets, you are driven by spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheet tracking our deal pipeline, spreadsheet tracking my stacking plan with availabilities and occupancies, spreadsheet tracking my rent roll and upcoming lease expirations, spreadsheet tracking all of my market data, tenants in the market and the stuff that, uh, that Michael's compiling over there, comp stack, comps. Um, and all my financial analysis. And it doesn't matter who you talk to, that is the case. I know because we talk to a lot of them. Um, so this is the way it makes us feel. I, I, I spent seven years as a commercial broker at CBRE. The files are in the computer and I'm in a mobile industry. I'm walking around, I'm touring, I'm an asset manager with assets all around the country or all around the world, and yet my business doesn't come with me. That's the fundamental problem, and that's also the fundamental opportunity for our industry. Hightower changes all of that. We are the world's first mobile and cloud leasing and asset management platform. We deliver beautiful, powerful leasing tools to you guys on your mobile device, which I guarantee almost all of you have now that are smart. 
Um, and those of you that don't, will include a free iPhone when you sign up. Uh, and, and we consolidate all of the data that lived before in those static documents into one command center for your business. So that's my available inventory, that's my marketing files, that's my deal pipeline, that's my upcoming expirations, that's my encumbrances. All of that in one place, and it's beautiful, it feels like Apple designed it, uh, and it's easy to use. So what does that mean for you? It means, number one, you can run your leasing business from your smartphone. I know because we've got 1,200 brokers doing it right now. Uh, number two, you have live interactive stacking plans for every single one of the assets that you own across your entire global portfolio. Number three, if you're a portfolio manager, you get real-time visibility on every single deal in your portfolio, every single available space, all the way down to the suite level. And finally, Hightower is all about analytics. We talk a lot about big data. Data is what is going to be interesting over the next three years. When you combine that with mobility and beautiful design, you have something very magical. So Hightower is built on top of an analytics platform. And all that means to you is that every component of your business, Hightower now delivers analysis on it. So what are my deal conversion rates in an asset by asset basis? Hightower can tell you. How long does it take us to get deals done? Hightower can now tell you. What is my deal pipeline look like in Shanghai versus San Diego? Hightower can tell you, and it can do it on your mobile phone. So that is the, that is the vision for Hightower. And here's kind of what the world looked like before on the left. There's a bunch of documents and emails connecting all of us in this collaborative world. And Hightower brings the new world where you have a single interface, a single platform to drive your business, and you can connect with each other in real time seamlessly. So just to give you a recap on where we're at, we've got a quarter of a billion square feet on the platform today. We've got over 1,200 commercial brokers and over 100 institutional owners. 10 of the top 50 institutional owners use Hightower right now, portfolio-wide, and we're coming to Europe. So I would love to talk to you if you're interested in learning how technology can drive your leasing and asset management business um, and drive leasing velocity. Thank you so much, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Who'd like to start us off? So I think I can start. Um, I went through the CRM process for my, my fund and uh, we were looking for a solution. There were great things like this uh, yeah. for our space. And the thing I figured out was how, can I cu how customizable that is, how does it fit to my needs, first of all. Secondly, the connectors to any other third-party providers and information. So can you give me something about that? Yeah, integrations are critical. So commercial real estate's coming from a world of completely siloed technology systems. They're like mid-1990s ERP systems like Yardi and MRI. We integrate with those. So your property management accounting system, Hightower integrates with them. If you're on Salesforce or CRM, Hightower integrates with them. That's actually been a key to adoption and a key to stickiness for us as a platform. Uh, so it's been huge. Um, maybe I follow on that one a bit further. So what about data security? I'm worried about my yeah, data. Totally. Uh, first of all, secondly, uh, data loss. So can I pull it back? Can yeah. I store it on my side or something like that? Yeah, no, huge question. So we just signed up last week an $8 billion publicly traded REIT. Um, their data security issues are paramount. They have Sarbanes-Oxley requirements. They have, uh, effectively, Hightower becomes a system of record for these companies' most valuable data. It's the leasing data that drives their business. So we, I mean, I could get through all the technical kind of, you know, security measures, but everything from data redundancy, disaster recovery, on-site, off-site, we're cloud-based. We have redundant hosting locations, two-factor authentication by default. I mean, a lot of stuff. Uh, we effectively have to have the security level of, you know, a, a Bloomberg terminal providing you know, services for you know, JP Morgan's investment group. Okay, okay. Juliet, makes all, all makes good sense. Are you all that? Okay, Chris. I, I saw a couple, I think, of strategic partnerships. Maybe you mentioned Yardi. Um, are there other strategic partnerships that you are looking at to yeah. scale more rapidly? You have to identify them, but. I mean, I'll tell you, it seems like you and Comstack should probably yeah. have a conversation. So uh, I think that we're, uh, actually maybe just a comment on that. I think the new world of commercial real estate technology is going to be a world of a connected ecosystem. So Hightower just announced two weeks ago a partnership with a company that's actually similar to Visualize called Floored. And they build a wonderful technology platform for 3D visualizations that now lives natively in the Hightower mobile app. So if you spend a million dollars on Floored technology, you can now use it inside of your Hightower asset management app seamlessly. Uh, we're going to connect with, so we already connect 
right, with property management systems. Uh, our roadmap is, uh, is, is very focused on making sure that Hightower can become the one system of record for all of that data, and that requires us to have really great relationships, technology relationships, with a lot of the other systems that they use. We just launched a feature that syndicates all of your available space to listing services like CoStar. That's a huge time saver for our clients at Cushman Wakefield and CBRE. We're always trying to push that information. It's never up to date. It's never in sync. Those kinds of problems. Okay. Well, make good sense. Any more questions? Seem I think we've got it taped. Okay. Just come along the line and just, if you want to just give an indication of your level of enthusiasm for this one as a digital disruptor. Juliet. I, I think I know a lot of brokers who just want to come up and hug you. So, um, yeah. Uh, we love brokers. Hey, I want to hug you as well. Uh, Can I, uh, yes. oh, okay. Uh, I need that. Okay. So, um, I think there's a need in the market, and I, I, I suppose it's a great solution. Um, disruptive, I don't know. So, it could be that you improved something which is there and. and we haven't okay. talked about the data that's being collected every single day, just as an outcome of using Hightower. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. Well, we should talk about that. <laughs> Okay, Chris, getting yeah, yeah, I, I have the same reaction. Uh, disrupted, not sure. Inclusive, certainly. And I think that's one of the things about it. You know, it, it, it caters to the broker community, to the, the owners, the managers. Everybody seems that they can get a piece of this. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much indeed. So that's our eighth, our final disruptive technology. Have Thank a seat. Um, well, I might do. What do you think of this one? Enthusiastic? Still there. Brilliant, we're on the home straight, and what's more important, we're going to finish in a couple of minutes, and we've got a refreshment. Cushman and Wakefield, thank you very much, offering some refreshments outside in the foyer in just a moment. But maybe we need to work out who the winner is. Normally it's the judges that have the say, but no, this afternoon it is you. You are going to have the final say. It's going to work like this. <coughs> I'm afraid you don't have a wonderful scorecard or whatever, but I'm going to go through each of our eight contestants, and when I mention their name, first of all I'm going to come to the judges, and you are going to be able to with your, have you got a, have you got a happy, happy stick thing? No, oh well, okay, you'll have to use your hand. I'm sorry you feel, feel ex excluded, but hey, that's, that's life, that's, that's tough being at the top. So. You have got one vote. So eight, each of you have got one vote. Okay? So when I announce the first one, if none of you think that's not the one, I'm going to go for another one. Just stay down there. And then I'll go number two. After each, I've checked with the judges, I'm going to come out here, stick your LED stick up in the air for the one you think that has got to be the winner. Okay? Now, just so you know that there is X-Ray Digital TV, CTV checking that you only vote for one. And what will happen is we will check your picture, it will connect you back to your badge, and you will be barred from MIPIM for life if you vote for more than one. Scouts on a promise. Okay. So this is sort of a bit of fun, but it could transform these guys. I mean, you're going you're gonna to make it anyway. They're wonderful. So here we go. What I'm going to do, I'll check what the slide is. What's the next slide up on? Is that going to help us? So I think our first, I'm going to go one to eight. And when I announce it, if you could stand up and just go, well, hey, that was me. All right. So our first, is this going to be the winner? Our first, oh, and Joanna, I need you with me because you are my independent verifier of the number of sticks that are up in the air. Okay. And if you put the stick up in the air and you're very enthusiastic, if you could wave it as well, that would kind of be cool. So we'll get an indication. I feel pressure on us too. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to start with a judge. So our first one was um, Romain Amato for joie.com. Stand up and say yee hee, wahai. Okay, judges? Okay, okay. Shwai.com, who's for that one? Okay, you're in the lead at the moment. Okay, okay. Number two, Ross Bailey. I hope you're remembering what these ones are. Ross Bailey, appear here. Remember that one? Ross Bailey. Okay, judges? 
However, out there, I get a letter. 42. That's the answer to every question, so that's fine. Okay, got a feel of that? Okay. Number three. Uh, Jean-Marie Célévier and Tandoori by Spice Soft. Great one there. Would like to play poker with you lot, I tell you. Okay, Tandoori by Soft, Spice Soft. Who's in there? Okay, right. You could photograph them, couldn't you? There we are. And then we get, just in case, because there's always a dispute, isn't there? We need a device to stop disputes at judging contests. Okay, so our fourth one with Comstack from the USA, Michael Mandel. Oh, hello, a bit of movement among our judges out there in theatre land. All right, thank you very much. Fifth. Scott Pickin, wealth migrate. Are you with the wildebeest? You're a, you're a busted flush now, so out there, Scott. Who got goes for that one? Okay, some enthusiasm. All right, very very good. And then our sixth, Spallion, with uh, Renaud Pover. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, you've got all you've secured all the French vote. Least. That's, that's fine. That's excellent. I thought you were going. I thought the phrase would be out there in front. You know. Okay. Okay. Take off your visualised glasses because it's Henry Stewart with visualised from the UK. Who's with that one? Okay. Your joint last, but we love it. Okay. And finally, High Tower with Brandon Weber, the last one. Ooh, okay. So, it's a tough world out there, but we reckon that. We reckon the judges got it all wrong because the winner is Ross Bailey from Appear Here. Congratulations. <laughs> A wonderful, you must show them in glass, so we must be a little bit careful as we hold that up. But that is a great trophy, okay? Wonderful. You've also got a certificate, and even more, we're going to give you two free tickets to come to MIPIM next year, and two tickets in a helicopter ride anywhere from Cannes next year, okay? So congratulations to you, and the judges will congratulate as well. Okay, could we say a huge thank you to all our contestants. There are some fantastic disruptors. A brilliant job. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for playing the game because it's a crazy world like that. But we've all gained for the experience. Could I also say a huge thank you to our judges, uh, Saluli, Juliet and Chris, and also for your support for this event. We are at an end. It's been raining out there, so you made a great choice to come here. But do loiter in the foyer. We're going to take a few photographs, but then these guys, and next year it'll be guys and girls, these guys are going to be back out there, hopefully, shortly, and you'll be able to have a chat with them. But for now, huge cheer. Thank you all very much for your participation. We hope you've enjoyed this afternoon, and we hope some digital disruption is going to be part of our future. I'm sure it will. Thank you very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, to also disrupt the end of this session, please join me in a big round of applause for our perfect master of ceremony, Peter Woodward.